Welcome, my name is Ron Shaw and this will be a short video on how to control administrative access to your router. Now in this video we will be performing four tasks. The first task will be to configure and encrypt passwords on your router. We'll also configure a login warning banner on your router. We'll configure enhanced username password security for your router and we'll configure enhanced uh, virtual login security on the router. Alright, let's get started with the first task and that will be configuring and encrypting passwords on our router. So let me go to my, uh, to my um, command prompt here and we're going to be working on the Mayberry router today. So, why is it necessary that I perform this administrative access? Well, by default, our Cisco routers and Cisco switches come with no or very limited security features enabled. So, as administrators, we're always worried about unauthorized accesses to our devices. So, in order for us to protect ourselves from unwanted access, we have to uh, apply more stringent security policies and and now how do I know how to set these settings well all organizations need to have a written security policy and within these written security policies we're going to address things like minimum password length how often we change them and all the factors that will be unique to our organization so one of the first things we're going to do on this router is because right now I there's no passwords on it so I can go to enabled or whatever to the previous exec without prompting any type of password so I want to secure all that functionality so one of the first things I'm going to do is I'm going to set an, an enabled secret password and then I'm going to set a minimum link for that password and then I need to go to my console ports my VTY ports and my auxiliary port and secure those ports for administrative access so one of the first things I'm going to do here or task one is I'm going to configure a minimum link now what is the minimum link again your written security policies will dictate that link so in order to set a minimum link for your password we're going to use the security command now the security command has a couple of options for it I have security uh, authentication and then I have security passwords so let me just do the security passwords and show you the options for here there's only one option minimum link so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set minimum link and for our video here we're going to be using a minimum length of 10 characters now that is set the the policy that says all passwords will need to be 10 characters in length. So let's set there and create an enabled secret password. So our enabled secret will be Cisco1234. Now again, these are passwords that we would not want to use. I'd want to use upper, lower, special characters and things like this. So I'm going to hit enter. Ah! tells me I can't use this password. Well, why? Well, if you notice, Cisco1234 is only nine characters in length. So in order to fix that, I need to make it ten characters in length. So in this case, I'm just going to say Cisco12345. All right, now that is set our enabled secret password. So now, when someone's in the user exec mode and they type enable, it doesn't take them to the previous exec mode. So let's go and set our console access. So, what I don't want anybody doing is walking into my, um, my um, main distribution frame and plugging in a console cable to the back of the router because I don't want them to have physical access. So, to do that, I'm going to password protect that console port on, on the back of the router or switch. And the command for that is line con zero. Now, what this does is this moves me into the line configuration mode and more specifically the console. So I'm going to set password for it, and we're going to use password Cisco Com Pass. Now, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to set there and set an, an exec timeout. Now, what is an exec timeout? Well, lack of better terms, let's uh, let's use the Microsoft box for an example, a Microsoft system. Let's say uh, we have screensavers set up and we're logged in and we don't have any activity on, and we're not moving the mouse or typing anything. And then after a certain period of time, it locks us out. 
Now, this is a very good security feature that I would like to enable it on the router. So let's say, hey, I'm working on a router and then somebody comes in and gives you the old, hey, you, hey, you need to come in here and work on this. So what do you do? You get up, you forget to log out of your router and then you um, go to launch or whatever. Well, in the meantime, somebody comes in behind you 15, 20 minutes later and sees that, oh, this router is logged into the privilege exec mode and they go in there and start making changes. So by setting the exact time out, it allows me to sit there and basically say, hey, after a certain period of time, I don't have any keyboard strokes or anything like this in the CLI to go ahead and log them out. Now, uh, let's look at some options here. Now, if you can see, I have timeouts and minutes, and you can see the value here, anything from 0 to 35,791. So we'll set five minutes, and now let's look at the next option. Now I can set seconds. So let's say I'm going to do five minutes and 30 seconds. Let's say uh, if I did this, is this legal? Yeah, it would be legal, but what this is doing is basically disabling it. It would never time out. For security reasons, this would be a setting that you would not want to do uh, in real life. Now, it does have some practicalities. Let's say we're doing some troubleshooting and we're sitting here looking at different, we got multiple screens open to our consoles to multiple routers and we're bouncing back and forth. Well, you might want to turn this on while you're troubleshooting and once you're through, make sure that you set it back. Now, the next command we're going to do is logging synchronous. Now, what does this command do for me? Well, if you've ever been typing on a router and a console message pops up, it interrupts your typing and displays that console message um, to the screen. And this can be very annoying for uh, individuals that are not uh, used to these messages popping up. So by doing this, once I start typing, then um, they'll... If there is a console message, it will not interrupt me. It'll let me continue on typing the command uh, as if uh, nothing was happening. All right. Now, the next thing we're going to do is uh, I got to say login. Now, by doing the login, actually starts the login services. Without this command, everything we've done with this port would not uh, would not be functioning. By this. Using this command, it actually turns it on. So now when somebody connects to it via the console, you will be prompted with a password. Now that we got our console, let's go ahead and take care of our auxiliary port. Now, routers have auxiliary port. Now, I'm not going to get into purposes and all the things that we can do with it, but if someone's to plug a console port into that auxiliary port, there is the potential that they could start administrating this router through that port. So I'm going to sit there and do the same process here. We'll say password, and we'll put this as con uh, password. We'll, do, uh, we'll set uh, an exact timeout on this uh, of five minutes. We'll say uh, login. Now I won't need to set a synchronous on this interface. Now the next one I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, control my VTY access. And now routers have a interfaces by default of zero to four. Now what are these used for? Anytime anybody telnets or SSHs into this router, then these will be the password that they will be required to use to connect in. So we're going to do password, and we'll do Cisco. VTY pass. We'll set our, our exact timeout to five minutes. Uh, we'll say login. Again, I won't need to do the um, uh, login synchronous here. Now, now that we got these configured, let's do a little quick show run. Now, my routers, this takes a few seconds for these. Uh, by the way, I'm using a 2600. Uh, uh, 2610XM routers here using the iOS uh, 12.4. So let's first look at the security here. Here's our command that set the uh, security password to 10 characters. This is my enabled password. If you noticed here, it's using a Cisco MD5 hash to secure that password. Now, why are they doing it? So someone just couldn't look over your shoulder and determine or see your um, enabled password in plain text. So let's go on down to our console. Now, if you noticed here, my password for your console is in plain text. Now, that's not very good. Someone could look over your shoulder and see it. Same thing with your auxiliary password and my VTY. So 
So if someone was looking over my shoulder, they could potentially uh, gleam or determine my password based on this information here. So what I'm going to do is I need to fix this. And the command that we're going to use to fix this is it, uh, we're going to encrypt, or this, uh, the final task here will be encrypt these clear text passwords using the service password dash encryption command. So in order to set this, we're going to get into configuration mode again. And I'm going to say service password dash encryption now by turning this command on uh, allows me to encrypt all my plain text passwords so let's do a show run here now the reason why I'm doing show run is because I don't want to go back to the privilege exact mode to issue this so the do command just allows me to do a one command uh, in a different contents or a different mode without navigating back to uh, the privilege exact mode So again, it'll take a couple seconds here, and we'll move down. And now we can see that it used a Type 7. Now that's not MD5. It, uh, it's a Cisco, it's a very weakened algorithm used to encrypt these passwords. Now, the little thing about this, if, if I wanted to remove it, no service dash password, by issuing this command right here does not remove the encryption. Now, any new password I put in will not be encrypted. Or if I come back and change these passwords right here, they will be unencrypted. But So it's a security feature. So if somebody did come back in here and issued this command, it wouldn't unencrypt all your password. So let me go back here and put the command back in. All right, now let's go ahead and test these passwords and make sure everything works. Now. This is my console, so this should be Cisco Con Pass. All right, good, that works. Now let's do the enable password. This should be Cisco 12345. All right, good. Now that everything is right, let's go ahead and save our settings. And I'll just use the uh, write mem command. You could also do copy run start. Alright, that completes task one. Now let's move on into task two. Alright, now that we've got task one completed, configuring and encrypting our passwords on the router, let's go ahead and now configure a login warning banners on our routers. Now, these banners are necessary for us to set there and convey messages to individuals connecting to them. Now, I've got several types of banners that we can do. I've got message of the day banners. I've got exec banners. I've got login banners. Today, we're just going to do... Uh, and create a message of the day banner. So let's go back in here and uh, let's get our com uh, router back up and get into the command prompt and let's look at configuring um, our banners. Now to create a banner we must be in the configurations mode and the, and the base command is banner. Now when I set the banner you notice we've got several different options. I've got uh, a banner that I can set when a user uh, does the exact mode. When they log in, I can set a login. I can also do an MOTD. That's set the message of the day banner. And that's the one we're going to set right now. Now, anytime we create a banner, I'm going to make sure that it goes through a legal process. So we want to get our, um, our lawyer involved or someone in the legal department to review this banner to make sure that it can stand up in a court of law. Also, never use the word welcome in a banner because any because any lawyer can take that welcome word and twist it around. So now we're going to do MOTD. Now in order to create a message of the day banner, uh, before we start typing, I have to start, I have to use what we call a delimit character. Now this delimit character can be anything, any character. Now, I can use a C, but uh, be careful by using alphabets because what happens is the next time it sees a C in there, it will cut the banner off. So what I'm going to use is I'm going to just sit there and use the dollar sign. Now, I've already got a pre-configured banner here, so I'm going to be a little lazy here and I don't want to type mine out. So we'll go in here and I've got a banner that I've already created in here and I will copy it 
and I will just come right in here and paste it. And then I've got my banner in here and I'll end it with my dilemma character. Now, as we can see here, uh, let me go back to the beginning here. And it, you can see the entire command here. And then I'll just go here and hit enter. Now, that sets the banner. Now, let's do a show run and let's check and verify that the banner was in place. All right, there we go. Banner, MOTD, unauthorized access is strictly prohibited and prosecution to the fullest extent. So let's check it and test it. So let's do, let me exit all the way out and I'm gonna hit enter. Now, as you can see here, the banner popped up. Uh, unauthorized access is strictly prohibited in prosecution. So now I'll put the console password in here. If you remember, con Cisco con path. Cisco con pass. Okay, there we go. Enable Cisco one, two, three, four, five. All right, now that we've got that set, that completes setting up a banner. So now let's move on into the next task, step or task three.